All right, welcome back. It's still The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll be focusing on the uh, roadblocks, uh, checkpoints in Nigeria as the lawmakers are asking the Inspector General of Police to dismantle all illegal uh, roadblocks, uh, checkpoints. And let me just give you a background to that particular story. The House of Representatives on Wednesday called on the Inspector General of Police, uh, Osman Baba, to dismantle all illegal and unnecessary checkpoints in the country. This resolution was a, was a sequel to a motion of urgent public importance uh, moved by Ifani Moma on the need to investigate the death of 20 persons along the Oele Onicha Road in the Ihal area uh, of Anambra State. We have joining us this morning Chidi Omeji. He is a security expert and editor in chief, Nigeria Security Digest. Uh, thanks for joining us on the breakfast this morning, Mr. Omeji. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yes, it is indeed our pleasure. Now, the lawmakers are asking the Inspector General of Police to dismantle or roadblocks or illegal checkpoints in the country. But I am tempted to ask that this particular question. This is not the first time that we have talked about roadblocks, checkpoints, and um, you know what's uh, you know noise and sometimes they you know cause on the highway. But then again, why do we keep on acting as if we're going in circles when it comes to policy and statements concerning the lives of Nigerians and of course our road infrastructure? Right. Um, this issue of. Um Police checkpoints and all that. You know, just like you rightly said, it's been um, something we heard over and over again. But every other uh, Inspector General of Police that comes on board, the first uh, policy announcement we make is uh, we're going to dismantle every street block, all the checkpoints, and no matter of things. But it never came to pass. Um, I don't know what is, uh, you know, stalling such um, implementation, but I think time has come really for us to uh, understand that. Um, you, it's not just secure the community or the society only through roadblocks. Sometimes the roadblocks cause a whole lot of problems. People, um, I don't know if you have gone, if you have driven, uh, let's say between Lagos up to or uh, through Benin down to Anisha, you will count almost uh, a thousand roadblocks. If you are going towards, uh, let's say from uh, uh, Anisha to Wari, a distance of about an hour, you will see not less than 50 roadblocks. If you are coming from Otupa branch up to Ubulafo, you will count not less than 20 roadblocks manned by police and uh, sometimes the, the, the military guys. Now, my problem is not that, that, that there. My, my problem is that they constitute all manner of security breaches in themselves. Um, so I do not begrudge the House member who put up that uh, you know, uh, debate. And then so I will, I will think that the police should uh, man up this time around to, to take a look at this. Because uh, people are complaining. And uh, it's not as if they're giving us the best of security, you know, staying in those roadblocks. So how, how come we have so many of them, yet you see how you see how the incidents of the kidnap and normal things happening along the truth. So uh, it's something that we need to look into because people are complaining. I mean, government is all about people. People are not happy about this. And they are actually justified in their outreach. So that that might, might be what, but I, I understand that there's a need for peripheral for police to, to check or to you know but it should be um maybe born out of let's say uh, reports and then they have to now come up and stop people for for for, for a while. Not that they're going to live there every day, constituting reasons, collecting bribes, you know, doing a matter of things that that are terrible. So uh, to me, it's about time we, we get rid of those guys that they're not, they're not very effective. Uh, that's my first take today. All right, uh, Mr. Chidi Omeji, uh, we'll just uh, hold some of your thoughts that you have concerning this particular uh, um, issue and incident. Uh, we'll take a report on that particular issue and we'll come back and talk some more. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. High time the IG looks into these illegal checkpoints. You do not, it's common sense. How can you put a checkpoint, a police checkpoint, at the end of a slope that would be engulfed in between two fuel stations? What if a trailer that is carrying um, a, a tanker loses brake and something happens and it goes into flames? Without taking cognizance of the fact that there are, there, are, there are petrol stations on the right and on the left. And the most annoying part of it was that afterwards, 
the police that were at the checkpoint absconded. We lost over 20 people with our community due to the roadblocks at that particular point, which ought not to be. We've cried to the authorities that people that be, we've raised alarms over now before this time to make sure that the proper things are done. But as it is, nothing is happening until that same Sunday where a trailer carrying container load had to run into that roadblock with a traffic gridlock on that point and killed a lot of people, killed peasants, women, children that were on their way to go about their normal business. All right, welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We're still looking at the fact that lawmakers have called and are asking that, you know, roadblocks, roadblocks across uh, our roads be dismantled, illegal roadblocks and police checkpoints, as well as military. We still do have uh, Chidi, Chidi uh, Omeje, who's a security expert, joining us from Abuja. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us, Chidi. Thank you, thank you. Now, um, it's been also... Uh, reported that, of course, uh, that incident that happened, which is also the major reason that this lawmaker or the lawmaker has raised the concern uh, that checkpoints and roadblocks are responsible for some of the accidents that we have on our highways and our roads. Do you agree with that argument? Of course, now I mean a number of cases you have uh, seen that uh, because of these guys illegal blockage of the road. Oncoming vehicles who may not know that they are there, who just run into them and, you know, you see chains and chains of accidents happening, occasioned by this particular incident. Look, we are, we are a developing society. We are, we are modern people. We should understand that we cannot get stuck to a particular process of great things. We have seen that this particular group of talk have caused even more grievous harm to society than the intended action. So does it mean that this is the only way police can, uh, uh, this is the only way our police force can be effective? Well, they always block the road. I mean, we can see how these guys mess up the express. They will, you know, they will constitute traffic gridlock with all this manner of, they will put tires, put uh, locks of wood on the road. You know, looking as if we are in a war zone. For goodness sake, I will not defend people. Look, I know that, yes, we have security challenges, but there are, there are better ways, more effective ways, more civilized ways that we can do these things without what's in danger to the people, to the community that we think we are serving. So how, how long can we continue to screen this? How come that these guys are not able to come out with any other um, approach to this or method? Why can't somebody be generous enough to come up with a, a different way of, of, of uh, manning our roads without blocking the road? You know, have you, have you passed through this aspect I'm talking about? Let me tell you something. I'm from the South East. And I traveled to the east just uh, three weeks ago. And from that, uh, I took uh, a park, uh, I think, in Benway State, going to Ubolafo in Enugu State. My God, it is a horrible sight. Every uh, 10 meters, you see lots of wood that manned by policemen, very uncalled, very uncivilized, very corrupt uh, elements, constituting nuisance and corruption along the road. These guys should be there. So, what, what, what kind of thing is this? Uh, to me, I don't know why we, we, we have to wait up to this point or wait for uh, an honorable member, whatever I call them, to bring it up. This is something that the people are complaining about and nobody's giving a thought to it. Is it when people begin to take law into their hands or begin to, um, begin to disobey them that we now, we now, we now take a look at it? Chidi, so to me, it's, it's very annoying, really, that we allow this to, to persist to this point and become a, a great uh, you know, uh, nuisance to the people. Yeah, Chidi, I understand your this um, passion and um, position concerning all of this. But then again, you know, the House of Rep a member who raised that particular um, in incident uh, talked about um, illegal uh, checkpoints. You are a security expert. Just walk me through. How does it really work uh, in uh, saner climes? How does it really work? You know, what's the best uh, international best practices concerning checkpoints? Because um, for for in my understanding, most times they put checkpoints and roadblocks if they are on a particular alert uh, or maybe on the trail of uh, some um, criminals, you know, and they just uh, felt, and that's the policeman that is, felt that they, uh, those criminals would go through that particular road. Are roadblocks or checkpoints supposed to be a permanent uh, site on our roads, really? 
Let me tell you, in the, in the past, you used to have what they call highway patrol. Mm. That, these guys are very mobile. You know, there's a mobility of action. But this, you are talking about people who are, who are just, you need to see them living around there, you see them sitting somewhere, and, you know, what they are going to sit somewhere in the shade, and then they, are, they will set up their, you know, those logs of woods on the road, and then be extorting drivers and then all men passing. That is no security. What I'm suggesting, I think the best, the uh, best practice is that you work with intelligence, you work with information. If there's a, a, a breach, if there's a particular information, you 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 have those mobile uh, mm -hmm. mobile uh, highway patrol. You know that's why they call highway patrol. They patrol the, the, the express so that they, they can even you know uh, get to solve issues. But these guys are just domiciled one place, collecting bribes, and we know it. We see. It. Everybody see that this by extorting Nigeria. Is that how come? How come the, the authority are not? Are they not see this thing? So it, 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 people say that that they owe those money. They remit this money back to offices. That is why they are persisting. Because if it, if if it's only them that the, the guys on the that they handle the money, I'm sure the, the people in the, the authorities would have stopped it. But because you have to remit to the DPO, you have to remit to the area commander, area commander, and this is we know this when Nigeria. Well, we cannot continue this way because we we, we are not um, in a 18th century you know political system. We are moving forward with the, with the rest of the world, and the, the rest of the world works with, with uh, information. They work with technology. They work with you know you know some ingenuity. Not just not to stuck to just stuck to one particular method of policing that we have adopted for the past 50 years. What sort of thing is have we solved the problem? Are we still having kidnapping on the express? Why are we having accidents or occasioned by this kind of roadblock? How come we're not looking at this? What about the issue of um, unnecessary grade loss that cause people? You see, stretch vehicles up to two kilometers because not because some some guys think they are doing uh, not doing work that is not uh, you know very very. Anyway, um, let not be angry. This is uh, we're talking about. We're talking on radio, but look, these guys are not helping us. I must tell you the truth. Okay, yeah. so, but um, let's also um, look at the fact that, because I'm, I'm very concerned about how we say these um, roadblocks are illegal and they're being manned, they're just not being manned by civilians or, you know, ordinary men, but they are manned by, you know, men of the Nigerian police force. And in most cases, you also find uh, men of the Nigerian army manning this checkpoint. So how do you now say these roadblocks are illegal when you have uh, police officers manning these roadblocks or manning these checkpoints? Uh, that's the first question. So how do we now differentiate between legal and illegal uh, roadblocks? Well, when people say that, that those are illegal uh, roadblocks, it's to, to the extent of the fact that they are there not because this, uh, not because that we are seen invisible or, you know, uh, how do I put it, the results coming out. But because somebody set it up to get to export Nigerians and, and remit to, to offices, we know this. So that's why we say it's illegal. And don't forget, to, I, I, I want to remember that the, one of the first statements made by this correct IG is that we're going to dismantle all the roadblocks, we're going to withdraw policemen from, uh, uh, you know, what do you call it, personal, the private um, protection and all manner of things. They, they never get to do this because the reality is that the chains of police command rely on this thing for their for their for their pockets. We know it. So, but um, we are, we, keep, we must keep talking about it. We are Nigerians. Uh, this is our society. We can't be seeing these things and not, not talk about it. So, that's what the second question is: How do you distinguish between legal and illegal? As far as I'm concerned, the, the, the very fact that the, former, the IG had told us when he came in that we're going to just patrol them and they are still there, then they are illegal. So uh, it's only when the man comes and says, no, no, I've, 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 I've um, allowed them, let them stay. We now say, okay, fine, it's legal. But the he told us that he is going to, that, that those guys are dismantled. So, so but they, are, they are speaking up on daily basis because they know that they are making, you know, some uh, money from it. At the expense of Nigerians, you know, uh, so we can't, what are you talking about? Are we going to talk this, uh, need to worry about legality or illegality. We know that it's illegal. Let's not, let's not, let's not, let's not glamorize this matter. It's, it's okay. something that everybody knows. So, so okay. how, the, how, then, how then do we now protect our roads from, you know, because you can't take out the fact that, you know, crime and criminality, uh, criminal elements would always ply these roads. How do we then now protect I've, our roads I've, if we I've take out? I've told you that there's no better, there's no more effective method other than having a mobile 
you know, uh, police patrol that do not do inside one place. But I will be running down once in a while, they will cross paths, you know, and work, work with intelligence, work with, uh, this, you know, so you don't see that one. And by the way, how come within, between, within a kilometer, you will find about 20 roadblocks? What, what sense does that make? Within a kilometer. Look, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just try and pass through that uh, Otupa branch in Benoit State, up to Bola for any visit, and you see what I'm telling you. If you don't know about that, if that pass there, pass from, Le- from Lagos to, to Bini, to Onisha, see what I'm telling you. Now, even the, with the presence of all these guys there, have you stopped kidnapping happening along those routes? Have you stopped crime taking place? Have you stopped? So, what are we talking about? We are not talking with God, yet we are, we are giving all this level of inconvenience, and you don't want us to, to talk about it. So, uh, my, my dear, the best method is to have a very mobile, very, um, you know, uh, the, the kind of uh, patrol that, that stays, I'm talking about patrolling, not stay, not domiciled one place. One place, you see them, you know, they will, you know, they, they will action, action, you see them, you know, they have bedroom slippers, you know, playing around with locals, they're not even, in the, in the, you know, at, at a lot. So, as soon as they're in action, that's why most of them, most of them, they take them on away. Because they are listening around, waiting for vehicles to extort money from. This is what we see every day. So we, let's not twenty. Everybody know about it. Every Nigerian know about this. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Chidi, so invariably, if um, I got you correctly, you are just saying that um, all roadblocks, all checkpoints around Nigeria should be removed completely, cold turkey, as in uh, right now we shouldn't even see any presence of um, you know these checkpoints. Uh, so. Invariably, you're talking about a mobile uh, highway patrol. Over time, we've had, you know, highway patrol like you have said before. But indeed, uh, it was not really so workable. They were dismissed, and um, this we now saw the presence and the resurgence of, uh, you know, roadblocks and um, uh, checkpoints, or whichever term you want to use to call them. You know, but then again, don't you think that is a bit of a policy somersault? Today we say we have a highway patrol. Tomorrow we have checkpoint. We have, you know, roadblocks. Uh, over time, don't we just uh, don't you just see a situation where would uh, almost run out of option as per we keep on doing the same thing and yet uh, we're expecting to see different results? Um, I, I didn't quite get you, but if if, uh, if if what I heard was right, um, look to me, I, I'm not saying that we have to take away all the entire roadblock, right? What I'm trying to tell you is this: that if you concentrate this roadblock along the stretch. Because it is unnecessary to do that. And by the way, roadblocks can come in. You mustn't, they mustn't live there forever. They can, they, can, they, they can set up a roadblock based on information, based on intelligence reports that probably certain things are happening or certain people are passing through. You set, you set a roadblock to, 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 to restrict movement, to an extent, to that point in time that we are able to solve the problem. But we're talking about that these guys that domicile death permanently constituted nuisance. Perpetrative corruption and every amount of things we see there is something that we know. So it's not something, it's not. So what I'm trying to advocate here is even if you're going to have a, a, a roadblock, let it be the type that are not permanent. Then there's a set of roadblock to solve a particular problem and you move on. You move on to other part of the, of the, of the extra. And let us have a very mobile, you know, uh, uh, police activity on the express, not double side one place, but do that. They have to be patrolling the express. We, 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 we pay them for that, but they, 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 they don't decide to stay one place to extract money from us. So we, we can't take it no more. Uh, that's all the point. Thank but, you. But, but some of the roads are actually uh, deserted. I mean, if you apply some of these roads, you find out that you really do not find houses or any structure, and so they're quite lonely. Um, don't you think that um, it's still still necessary that, um, as much as we're saying, dismantle the illegal, uh, you know, checkpoints? It's also still good to ensure that we have some form of control. I, have, I do not know why I don't get to hear you clearly. What, what, what is that question? I'm so sorry. I'm talking about the fact that the roads, some of those roads, are very deserted. They are lonely paths, and um, okay, okay, taking okay. out these checkpoints might just pose so much risks and danger. Now, if you have such road the way you describe it, it's not even better to have a police system that, that patrols, that is quite mobile. If you are dominating a particular place, even the bad guys know where you are. They will avoid you. They will avoid a particular route. But if you are mobile, they will know where you are. It's, 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 it's as simple as that. So what what I'm just saying is, let's have a mobile uh, 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 policing system along our, our, our roads. Not guys who stay on place, uh, Cover the, the, the bigger portion of the road 
and, dip, um, and, and uh, transporters, uh, what do you call it, commuters will be suffering to to, to, to access road. And most times they don't even take anything. As long as you get there, you give them that thing they want, you move on. And they will actually suffering. So I'm talking, we're talking about the effectiveness of this policing system. So this, this particular one, we have seen it over time, that it's not yielding result. So why can't we try another one? And I know what I'm advocating is highly mobile policing system along our route. Simple. Let's try it and see how effective it can be. All right? Mm. All right, uh, Chidi, thank you so much for your comment. But then again, I, before we just um, wrap up all of this now, what would you suggest? I just want to get like a practical example. You said that there are too many checkpoints. You know, what's the practical move to make for like uh, maybe a one or two kilometer stretch of road? Like just how many checkpoints should we have eat or have if it is actually necessary? Good question, I think. Now, uh, you know, you and I know that policing, uh, in fact, security um, uh, agents work better with intelligence. They work better when they have information. Now, what we're saying is, in a particular stretch of, say, a kilometer or two, you could have a roadblock. Why? Yeah, so that you can restrict movement to an extent, to an extent, a very minimal extent. All right? So, but the bulk of your police activity should be very, very mobile. Because the criminals are mobile, they don't stay on place to commit crime. And if they know that, that, this, that this, this, this is the spot you, you are, they will naturally you know, change route, take another place or find a way to beat you. But if you are mobile, they don't know when you come, it's when you come upon them. And you come upon them. So that's what I'm saying. So it's not, look, I cannot stay here and say, okay, one, one checkpoint per, per kilometer. No, it, it depends on the exigency of that particular area. Okay, look, uh, that was, okay. I, I keep talking about that to Tupac branch because I, I, I assessed it very recently and it was a horrifying experience I saw. Do you know that between Tupac branch to, to let's say, Orakram or something like that? Eh? No, no, from Orakram to, I don't know how they call that. You know, you have to about two kilometers. Do you know you have up to about 20, 20 roadblocks? Horrible roadblocks with, with, with security guys looking like, like rebels, you know? Constituting designs there with their AK, you know, and then extorting every single person that passed. It's terrible. Nobody knows why it goes that way. Mm, thank you. All right, thank you so much. Indeed, we have been speaking with um, Chidi Omeje, a security expert. He is the editor-in-chief, Nigeria Security Digest, and uh, we have been trying to make some sense uh, for, out of the request of um, the lawmakers asking the Inspector General of Police you know, to dismantle all illegal checkpoints. We do appreciate your input, um, Chidi. Thank you so much. I appreciate that question. All right, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a yet another break. We'll come back and we'll focus on Omicron and some concerns and what we need to do to ensure better protection for ourselves here as Nigerians. In a moment, don't go away.